When you live in Las Vegas, where can you go to escape the crazy pace? Somewhere less than 30 miles away, steeped in history and chock full of mid-century charm, the best antique stores, the best burgers and brews, and even a live performance on demand. <laughs> Does such a place even exist? You betcha. It's Boulder City. We ran away this Monday to take in all that and more. Oh, and by the way, there's a dam nearby you might be interested in. So get ready, because this adventure starts right now. It has been several years since we gave Boulder City some love on our channel, and in that time, we hope we've gotten better at showing you some cool things. This town is definitely worth a fresh look. Today, we are on US Highway 93, just 26 miles south of Las Vegas, but a world away. We're going to spend some time in Boulder City's historic district. This section of the highway has been renamed Nevada Way, and between here and downtown is a collection of 514 buildings and structures that were placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1983. They were all built during and just after the era of Hoover Dam. Let's go take a closer look. El Rancho Boulder is a classic motel from the days when road trips first became a big thing. It sits in the heart of the historic district and offers simple lodgings and friendly service. A few doors down, the Sands Motel has been proudly family owned and operated since 1951. What a run! It's been around as long as I have. The rooms are newly renovated, mid-century modern, and how much do you love this vintage mural on the side of the building? Not all the businesses are thriving, but we still love the historic, vintage look to them. Who knows, maybe they'll all have new life someday. Across the street, the Boulder City Inn got a new name and a makeover in 2019. We are big fans of the neon sign. We read in the local paper last November that the Flamingo was bought up by a local couple who plans to revive this retro motel. Now, if you prefer more 21st century accommodations, there's a really nice Best Western here equipped with spa, fitness center, and on-site restaurant and bar. And ideally situated among the motels is a homey restaurant called the Southwest Diner. The decor is kitschy. The patio is popular. And the portions are hearty. Their tagline is, homemade is our specialty, the ultimate American and Tex-Mex comfort food. Y'all come back now, you hear? Not only is Boulder City proud of its dam heritage, and in truth, Boulder Dam, later renamed to Hoover Dam, is the sole reason the town exists, but also its parks and green spaces. This one is dedicated to the dam's construction engineer, Frank T. Crow. Mr. Crow's job is best described with this quote. For five long years, the mud, the remorseless current, the swift floods, the jangling telephones were his responsibility. And under his leadership, the dam was completed nearly two years ahead of schedule. Now here's a fun fact. The very first time the hard hat was required as mandatory equipment on the job was in the building of the dam. <laughs> and now you know the rest of the story. One street over is a green wedged shaped park where the mural you saw in the video opening is located. <laughs> I'd call this a statement piece. On the street end of the park is one of the many statues erected in the heart of Boulder City. 
This one, called Ragtown Goddess, represents the character and resiliency of the minor families who lived in this hostile environment in the 1930s in tents. Well, here we are. There's actually an audio walking tour of Boulder City, but we don't need that because we have signage and we have research. So, of course, you know that the dam had thousands, about 7,000 workers working on it. And you know about the high scalers and all the guys tunneling and all the guys doing the most, um, I guess we'll say noteworthy jobs. But you know what? There were also guys that did the less glamorous things like mucking out the tunnels or in this case our friend alabam his job was to stock the bathrooms for those seven thousand men with toilet paper and he is memorialized here with this beautiful bronze statue love boulder city a few others we captured in our wanderings and all of them donated and put in place less than a decade ago Now here's a couple of notable buildings at the Wyoming Street intersection. The National Park Service offices, building circa 1950, where you can get all the lake mead fishing and boating info you need. And the historic Department of Water and Power building, constructed in 1937, and a fine example of late Spanish colonial revival architecture. Okay back in the truck and further on towards Lake Mead. Boulder City is a rare example of a town that was fully planned and owned by the federal government to house dam workers. The streets in one direction were named by letters of the alphabet and in the other for the states along the route of the Colorado River. Let's circle back again, compare the corner of Nevada Way and Avenue B today to the early days in 1932. The Coffee Cup Cafe was made famous years ago on one of the earliest episodes of Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Dale and I stopped in there for breakfast on our channel back in summer 2020. Good morning, everybody, from the Coffee Cup in wonderful Boulder City, Nevada. We are so excited to be sitting at the counter and getting our breakfast. We haven't been to the Coffee Cup in many, many years, and we're so happy we could bring the camera and bring you guys along. It is a wonderful, iconic place. And we're getting breakfast, and we'll show you what it is as soon as we get it. Not only really good food, but just the greatest decor. Before we start exploring the town center on foot, we want to drive down a few of these residential streets around downtown and show you a slice of life in Boulder City. These houses were built either for the dam workers per the original plan or by the companies who brought in their employees to actually run the dam once it was operational. You can guess the relative importance of the person's job by comparing the sizes of the homes. From the small squares to the lovely duplexes to the red clay roofs and stucco finishes. Well, hey friends, we had to take a little lunch break. We're at one of our favorite burger joints in the whole Las Vegas Valley. It's called the Dillinger. I can't wait till you see the names of these burgers. They all carry the John Dillinger uh, gangster theme and the beef is delicious. In the heart of town is what was once the Bank of Nevada building circa 1941. Since 2011, it's been home to gourmet burgers and craft beer, an establishment called The Dillinger. Named for infamous bank robber John Dillinger, the interior is described as having rugged charm with a mix of wood, steel, and concrete. The bank is fondly remembered on the back wall. 
The menu promises fresh, never frozen burgers and fresh made sandwiches. And the bar offers ice cold barley brews and the most extensive whiskey selection in town. Now here's a fun fact. Boulder City was dry from its beginning in 1931 until 1969. Not only that, there is no gambling here and never has been. Well, what do you think about that barbecue brisket? It cost the $12 for this. I got the french fries and everything with it. I did not get the horseradish sauce because I don't like it. I'm going to have to cut this because if I don't, it's going to slop. I'll, no, let me give it a shot. Let me see if I can do it. I might be able to do it. You ready? Oh. Very tender. Just a hint of the barbecue sauce. Very, very good. These are uh, some kind of herb fries, I think. I usually eat these too fast. I'll take my time. Very good. Love thin cut fries. Excellent so far. Really good. So I got today's special, the Western Burger. It's slopped with barbecue sauce, bacon, cheese, and I don't know what all. I'm going to make a mess. Watch me. Mmm. Mmm. Barbecue sauce makes it. That is really good barbecue sauce. Something crunchy on there. Onion, onion straws. Oh. Big thumbs up. Now, trying to be a good girl, I didn't get the fries. I got Asian slaw. So it's kind of golden. What do you think about that? Mmm. That's a refreshing flavor. I don't know what that is dressed with. Not vinegar, I'm not sure. Rice vinegar? Wow, that's very refreshing. This, on the other hand, decadent. All right, my friends, let's go for a little walk. First up, the famous Boulder Theater. It opened in 1932 with 550 seats and the only air conditioning in Nevada. The owners offered free movies to the construction workers 24 hours a day. Years ago, the theater was purchased and restored by Desi Arnaz Jr. and his wife Amy, and was home to a ballet company and film festival. Sherman's House of Antiques has been here ever since we've been visiting Boulder City. In fact, their Facebook page says it's been 68 years. We always love how the merchandise spills out to the sidewalk, and since they are licensed estate liquidators, you can always find great vintage furniture right here. This place is probably the most colorful address in the whole city. The Western and Mexican Center occupies a building originally built in 1950 and has been run by the same family, multiple generations, since 1965. The inside of the shop is crammed with lovely selected arts, crafts, and gifts that represent the desert southwest in all its colorful glory. <laughs> we dare you to walk out of here without buying something. Now, not everything here is old. Boulder Dam Brewing Company opened the brew pub in 2007, but in doing so, they incorporated 1930s decor and even some actual artifacts from the dam build. It's a family business with Todd Cook as master brewer. Also fairly new to Boulder City is the Cornish Pasty Company. You may remember we featured the downtown Las Vegas location on our channel in the past. They serve traditional, made-from-scratch English handheld meat pies called pasties. And let me tell you something, they are terrific. Last summer, we stepped in here for lunch and each of us ordered a pasty. This humble all-in-one meal has a long and storied history as far back as the 1200s, eaten by tin miners in Cornwell, England. Mm -hmm. 
Directly across the street is truly the gem of the historic district, the Boulder Dam Hotel. It was built in the colonial revival style back in 1933, meant to accommodate official visitors and tourists to the dam. Of course, it's on the National Register of Historic Places. In the 1990s, a $2 million restoration project kicked off, and in the early 2000s, the beautifully restored hotel reopened. Stepping inside, here's the stairway to the downstairs lounge, and we'll have more on that in just a minute. The restaurant will soon be turning into a steakhouse on the weekends. The front desk offers brochures and postcards. And the lobby looks straight out of a movie set. What a beautiful room, huh? Oh, yes. So historic. That's the fun part. The hotel hosted big names in its heyday and was renowned for fine hospitality and its rich interior. Today, there's big band music playing softly from the vintage jukebox. We got to stop the video right here because something actually happened in the lobby that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> it was so extraordinary. We have to tell you about it in person. So there was a lady sitting, a very elegant lady sitting in the lobby as I was filming it. Yes, and uh, she actually plays down in the Cleveland Lounge down there, and she plays with a bunch of guys that are there, and she just happened to say, hey, do you want to hear a song on the piano? This piano has never been opened. Yeah, they actually had to go find a key. Her name is Sharon. And she is a cabaret singer and a pianist. So for us, they went and found the key and opened that piano in the lobby. All right, here's the spooky part. She started playing a song. Both Paul and I looked at each other because years and years ago, when I first met her, I was playing uh, in a little place and I did this song and I looked at her and this was our song. She started playing Misty, and we both went crazy. Actually, if we play the clip for you, you'll hear me say, oh my gosh, really quietly, because as you probably know, if you ever watch any of our Q and A's, <laughs> That's the song I fell in love with, Dale, on Misty, and that's the song Sharon played. Talk about goosebumps. It was absolutely bizarre, absolutely bizarre. And then we got to talking about when we got married at the Little Church of the West. The lady behind the desk said, oh, I got married there too. Yes, the front <laughs> desk clerk. We didn't get her name. But anyway, the four of us had such a moment in the hotel lobby. It was just extraordinary, just magical, it really was. And we talked about that I was a, a, an entertainer, and then she said she invited me to come down and sit in a couple of times while they're playing downstairs. Yeah, Monday night is cabaret night, yeah. so she invited him to come down. He, she said another spooky moment. Yeah. She has an ovation guitar <laughs> just waiting to be played, and that is Dale's brand. That's what I play. <laughs> anyway, it was a spooky kind of thing. We just wanted to share it with you. Let's get back to the video right now, one more thing to note about the hotel. It is home to a wonderful museum featuring exhibits on the Boulder Canyon project, building the dam, and the history of the town. These clips are from our visit a few years back. Who's up for a little antiquing? Let's pop into this building, which in 1948 was the Boulder Laundry, but today is a huge store with the unlikely name of Goat Feathers Emporium. And no, the current owners have no idea where the name originally came from. Boulder City probably has 10 or more antique shops, but this one, tucked away behind the main drag, is our favorite. They promise a walk down memory lane in here, and that it is. Every square inch of this huge building, even up to the ceiling, is a time capsule. And as you walk among all the displays, you can't help but recognize things your parents or grandparents had, things you grew up with, and that's the memory lane aspect of it. But most everything is for sale, from unique gifts to rare finds, and it's hard to resist. Just take all this in for a minute.
Corningware heaven, ladies and gentlemen. I have never in my life seen so much Corningware in one place. So many of the blue flower design, which I still have in my own kitchen. Three Amigos, right here in Boulder City. $25? $25. Should you buy it? I should, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> Before we leave the area, we always have to head down towards Lake Mead. From this vantage point, we get a great panorama of the town. Believe it or not, Boulder City is the largest in Nevada by land area, 208 square miles. But by design, it has very low population density. Less than 15,000 people actually live here. And as we round the bend, there's the lake. Our destination is Hemingway Park, and although it's early in the season, we wanted to check to see if there were any bighorn sheep. Well, looks like the sheep are still up in the hills, but still this is a gorgeous park with the rarest of commodities in the desert, lush green grass and a gorgeous blue lake in the background. We have certainly seen bighorn sheep here in earlier visits. They come down to the park in the summer months and take up residence, as many as 80 of them. These clips are from summer 2020 and summer 2023. You know what warms our heart is that many of you have made the trip to see them because we told you they were here. And we will leave you with this, the reason Boulder City exists. What started as Boulder Dam and was later christened as Hoover Dam is truly one of man's greatest achievements. In 2010, the Michael Callahan Pat Tillman Bridge spanning the Colorado River south of the dam opened to give us the best possible view of the whole thing. It is part of the new Interstate 11 Highway, connecting Nevada with Arizona and bypassing the old road that crossed the dam. No matter how many times we see this view, it still awes us. Hoover Dam, we had to leave you with that because it is just so spectacular. Like, what could top it? It's unbelievable it is one of the seven wonders of the world i think and when you you're there in person seeing it it's amazing my friends let me just uh, tell you one thing if you want a day trip if you want to get away from las vegas for just a little bit and it's only 30 some miles away get a car rent a car and go to uh, boulder city and spend the afternoon or the day you will not regret it it's such a wonderful little town we literally started looking at places to live in boulder city after we came home on monday we love that town so I, much i would live in boulder <laughs> city in a minute just like that it's so nice and the people are so nice and the place is kept up like a million bucks and get this no gambling. No gambling. And Dale would still live there. <laughs> I'd still live there. even if the, In fact, I might live there because of that. <laughs> One thing I do want to mention, they were worried when they started building Interstate 11 that, you know, similar to Route 66, once people started bypassing the town, the business would, would die. That did not happen. No. Boulder City is thriving. Yeah, people that want to go to Boulder City. And if you want to go the back way to get to Hoover Dam, Go right through Boulder City. It's nice. It's a pretty little town, and there's a lot of stuff to do there. Lots of antique stores and lots of places to eat. Yeah, lots of restaurants, and now they're getting a brewery, and they're, they're it's just really a happening place, and as Dale said, beautifully cared for. All right, my friends, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people, Miss Paula. Yes, don't look for a new video from us next week because we got stuff going on. We're doing some traveling and we will see you in two weeks. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.